UCC Missoula would like to acknowledge that we gather on the Aboriginal territories of the Salish and Kalispell people. We honor the path that they have always shown us in caring for this place for generations to come. Welcome to summer worship at UCC Missoula. In the spirit of slow pandemic re-entry, we'll be online for most of the summer with three outdoor in-person services. You can find our worship schedule for the summer on our website. UCC Missoula is an open and affirming creation and social justice church seeking to put joy and justice into our lives and out into the world in as many ways as we can with Jesus as our guide. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today's service begins with lament and moves into a spirit of praise just in time for us to go over to Zoom for our summer congregational meeting. Hi friends, this is Pastor Laura with a special message for children and the young at heart. Friends, I wanna talk with you this morning about our worship theme for the summer. A theme is kind of one idea that we think about all summer that kind of relates to all of the other themes that we're working with in worship. Ask your parents what a theme is and maybe they can tell you more. This summer, our theme is summer patchwork. Have you ever had to patch maybe a sock that had a hole in it or a shirt that had a hole in it? Did somebody help you to sew it up so you could keep wearing it? And I wonder if you are like me and you have maybe a special blanket or a quilt that you wrap up in when you feel cold or sick or extra tired or lonely or sad. When I wrap up in this special blanket that somebody in my family made, I feel like I'm getting a hug from them even though they're not here. Well, this summer, even though we probably won't be together all the time all summer, we are going to remember each other and think about getting a warm hug when we need it from our church family. And you can see that there are some places in this special quilt that need patch work. Oh, look at those spots that have holes. We are also going to continue to care about each other and to help each other and to patch each other up when we're sad or lonely or hurting. And for us at UCC, that means that we're gonna keep wearing our masks to help everybody stay safe all summer. And then we're going to keep sending each other cards and notes and emails. And we're going to keep up with each other in online worship and in-person worship when we have the chance. Would you join me in participating in our summer patchwork and patchwork at UCC? Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for our UCC community that just like this colorful quilt has lots of different beautiful people stitched together, held together with your love. Help us this summer to be patient with each other, to love each other, and to keep one another safe. And help us too to look forward to fall when hopefully we are able to be together every Sunday in person. We know that feels like a warm hug too. Thank you, God, for sending us your son, Jesus, to teach us your love and your way. Amen.
lives flow between good times and bad, between hope and despair, between praising and lamenting. Habakkuk was a prophet in Judah about 600 years before Jesus. In the short book of Habakkuk, we encounter both of these moods. Listen to the opening verses, one, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, words of despair and lament. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, the prophet's complaint. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? I cry to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you make me see wrongdoing? And look at trouble. Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise so the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. Now hear the words with which the book ends, words of hope and praise. Chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. Seasons come and go, and so once again I am back with you and grateful for the privilege. I started thinking about praising and lamenting as I thought about this year, this year since we've been together, remembering what it's been like for me, wondering what it's been like for you. It hasn't been an easy year. Every church that I know of has had conflict over the COVID protocol, what is safe to do, and when is it safe to do it? There was the insurrection at the Capitol. There were too many George Floyd events. Between the virus and the violence, we lost the feeling that we were safe. An illusion, perhaps, but such a comfortable one. Our elders in care centers didn't get visitors for a year. And though I didn't suffer the dramatic losses that some of you may have, uh, it was still a challenging year for me. Christmas was lonely without family. Easter felt flat. Anxiety was an uninvited guest in my, in my life and wouldn't go home when I tried to send it out. I got a little older and a lot slower. And the library was closed for months. Tragic losses, trivial irritations, there has been much to lament. Lamenting has an honored place in our faith tradition. In the Hebrew scriptures, our Old Testament, there is a whole book of lamenting. It's called Lamentations. It was written after Israel was conquered and the Hebrews were forced to leave their land to live as slaves in exile in Babylon. You can imagine that their suffering was immense. They had lost everything. Referring to the holy city, to Jerusalem, the writer of Lamentations puts these words. All night long she cries, tears run down her cheeks. Of all her former friends, not one is left to comfort her. We find the best laments in the Psalms. Almost a third of the Psalms are laments. They help us see that you can't heal what you don't acknowledge. Psalm 6 says, I am worn out with grief. Every night I flood my bed with tears. My pillow is soaked with tears. 
And you recognize this line from Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus quoted that on the cross. And Psalm 137 laments that experience of exile by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down and there we wept. On the willows there we hung up our harps. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? I felt like that at times this past year, living with the limitations and the losses, the frustrations and the fears, felt to me sometimes like I was living in a foreign land. Steve read for us the verses from Habakkuk, the fierce lament of those verses, and they sound like something written in the 21st century in the United States of America. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Destruction and violence are before me. The law becomes slack and justice never prevails. Our culture doesn't always honor lamenting. Either we want to move through grief too fast, denying that we've experienced something terrible and we need time for healing, or we want to wallow in it, identifying ourselves with our wounds. Neither of those is helpful. But sometimes we know how to lament. Memorial Day and All Saints Day are set aside by the community to lament the people we have lost. And sometimes lamenting takes concrete form, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial or the 9-11 Memorial. And of course, we express our lamentations through art and music. Listen to this powerful, the powerful poem, I'm reading just part of it, from W.H. Auden, written in 1936. It is a lament of the death of a lover. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, Prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin. Let the mourners come. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest. My noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun, pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood, for nothing now can ever come to any good. When I am in a lamenting place, it feels like I'll be there forever. But that's not so. The Psalms, just as they honor lamenting, they also honor praising. When I praise, I celebrate the greatness of God, the privilege of being alive, the grace that surrounds me. I bless and I thank and I stand in awe. Again, the Psalms give us models of praising. From Psalm 148, praise the Holy One, sun and moon. Praise the Creator, shining stars. Praise the Creator, hills and mountains and all animals tame and wild. Praise God, girls and young men, old people and children too. And from Psalm 104, as long as I live, I shall sing praise to my God. Praise is not the same thing as happiness. I can offer praise even when things are going wrong. Um, we heard from the prophet, again, that remember it began with a lament, it ends with praise. Even though the fig tree does not blossom and no grapes grow on the vine and all these other terrible things happen beyond imagination, I will still be joyful and glad. Lamenting is intense with its powerful emotions like rage or grief. Praising seems kind of wimpy by comparison. But I think praise is an act of resistance. When I praise, I refuse to believe that any problems, no matter how huge they are, are the strongest thing in the universe. Even though I am surrounded by death or versions of death like grief, weariness, hopelessness, when I praise, I am choosing life. When I praise, I am deciding to live however imperfectly I manage it. I am deciding I am trying my best to live out of faith instead of out of fear. 
When I praise rather than condemn, I am refusing to side with the popular attitude, the expected attitude of contempt and judgment and hostility. When I praise, I am refusing to share the despair. Praising, I think, is an act of resistance. In art and music and dance and poetry express our praising spirit just as they do our lamenting spirit. Sean Parker Dennison wrote about praise during the pandemic. He titled it In Praise of Praise, and the last verse goes like this. Yes, especially now, when so much is at stake, praise something, anything, anything so alive and extravagant that it wakens and calls you to discard despair, abandon apathy, and praise whatever brings you back to life. I have often judged my, lament, my lamenting feelings and my lamenting moods, saying to myself, so many others have it worse, what are you complaining about? Or you should be tougher. Or if your faith were stronger, you wouldn't be feeling this. Or lamenting is just not acceptable. And sometimes I scold myself for my praising moods too. Don't be such a Pollyanna. You must not be facing facts if you think there's any hope here. Hope, that's a naive position. But I've come to value both praising and lamenting. I see them both as an essential part of my faith and certainly an essential part of being a healthy person. It has been hard this past year or so. I am glad to be among you again, for you give me reason to praise, and you help me hold my laments more gently. I hope that I can do that for you as well. Our lives are a patchwork of lamenting and praising, praising and lamenting. Both states are holy. Both have something to teach us. So I, I invite you to come to the rest of this day, the rest of your life, come carrying your praises in spite of your lamenting. Come carrying your laments, but refuse to stop praising. Amen. Good morning, friends. I'm Pastor Laura Folkwine, the Associate Pastor here at UCC Missoula, and the sabbatical fill-in pastor along with Reverend Janice Springer for the summer. I invite you now into this time of prayer, which is a time for us to breathe together, to rest, and to trust in God's presence with us and in our community's love for one another and the earth. Let us begin by breathing and resting our bodies, these good bodies that carry us through the day, no matter what shape they're in, they are ours and they are good. So I invite you to rest your hands or hold them up or fold them onto your heart, whatever feels like an appropriate posture of prayer to you this morning. And I invite you to breathe slowly, fully, coming into the presence of God and this time of prayer together. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are with us. You are with us on the waves of emotion that we experience daily, monthly, over the course of a pandemic, during a summer. You walk with us, you breathe with us through lament, through pain and fear and worry and anxiousness. And you also celebrate with us when we feel praise, when we are awed by your creation, when we are thrilled to be in each other's presence, when we celebrate the growth of children, when we mourn death, when it touches our lives. God, you are with us for all of it. This morning, we pray for our church community here at UCC Missoula. We thank you for bringing Janice to us safely once again this summer. We pray for everyone who is traveling away from home for work or play or to see family. We pray for folks who are still separated for health and for safety. We pray for everyone who is working hard this summer in any job, 
We pray for everyone who is retired. We pray for people who are out of school, working summer jobs or trying to get into new routines. God, we pray for those among us and beyond our community who struggle, who suffer today, people who are facing violence, people who are recovering from addiction or still in the throes of addiction, people who are deeply sad, who are in the midst of lament. God, may they feel your presence. May we feel your presence in these low and hard times. God, be with folks who praise too, people who climb mountains and throw their hands up at the top, God. Thank you for moments of joy and appreciation and gratitude. God, thank you for this community. Thank you for the towns we live in and the people who serve in the roles of public servants. We pray for all of our leaders. We pray for leaders and nations around the world, for places far from us, yet close in our hearts. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And amen. When I think about generosity, I'm reminded of my first backpacking trip with the Boy Scouts. I was a none too fit 11 year old, and the troop was doing about five miles to a campsite in the Blue Ridge of Virginia. I was really struggling with the hike and with my pack. About four miles in, I tripped and fell. I was hurt, I was scared, I was embarrassed. Mr. Easter, the assistant scoutmaster, came over and took my pack, strapped it to his chest and walked with me that last mile. He salvaged the hike for me and let me keep my dignity. 60 plus years later, I still remember that hike. However, should he still be alive, I doubt that Mr. Easter would even remember what he did. I know now that a kind word, an act of generosity, the employment of our skills and other resources to serve the community and the lives together will have positive impacts on others that we will never be aware of. And these seemingly tiny effects will multiply as they are paid forward. I encourage you to be as generous and as loving as you can be as we move forward together. Hey there, I'm Jean Wussner and I'm coming to you on behalf of the Visionaries at UCC Missoula. As you may or may not know, the Visionaries are the group of people who um, decorate the communion table and the chancel area of the sanctuary for all of our worship services. We've been doing that um, for all the online services and now the in-person services since the pandemic started and before, and we need your help. We would like to um, request that people get flowers for our services. And to do that, you can go to your eBlast um, and click on the link and select a Sunday to bring flowers to church, which will be filmed in our online services for the following week. All the instructions are there on the form and uh, we'd so appreciate your help in bringing beauty to our sanctuary this summer. Thank you so much. Hey, Victoria, this is your friendly UCC cabinet here. 
we just wanted to wish you all the best as you get ready to birth this baby boy. We know it will be hard work, but a great experience and you will be so happy to see him and we will be so happy to meet him when it's time. Um, we just hope everything goes very, very well. We miss you already. And we'll be thinking of you um, from now until we hear and even beyond. So yep. best of luck and uh, here's to you. Yay. We want pictures. Yeah. Yes, yes. Lots of, send pictures, lots of tons of lots of love things. and lots of prayers. Yep. We love you, Victoria. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Eternity leave. Bird to breathe. <laughs> Come back. <laughs>